Peter, we are losing Armageddon, the girl whispered intensely. You must aid us. Tears sparkled in her eyes. Only with your help do we have any chance of prevailing. Unless you join us, her breath caught. Perhaps even if you do, the galaxy is doomed. All right, so Dr. Zarkov, at the peak of his career, couldn't have improved on it. So Tom Corbett's space cadet would have blushed. So Captain Video, rather than live with the stigma of having such a declaration attributed to him, would have fallen on his sword. But that's what she said. And I believed her. Of course I believed her. I defy any live, practicing, heterosexual male to gaze into those eyes and not believe. Least of all, one who's been a compulsive rescuer of itinerant, distressed damsels since... Well, I guess I knew I had a predisposition towards that sort of thing even before I knew what one saved them for. Learning the answer didn't relieve the condition one bit. Anyway, it all started with... Hmm. Hmm. Certainly, I know how it started, but come to think of it, I'm not sure precisely when, nor even what it was specifically that alerted me to the fact that my tranquil solitary vacation, not to mention the entire first chapter of my life, were about to be terminated. Rudely. The blue-white glare shining through my eyelids with ever-increasing intensity would have gotten my attention eventually. Likewise, the nearly subsonic rumble imperceptible at first, but waxing steadily to the point where, despite determined efforts, I could no longer ignore it, undoubtedly would have been enough sooner or later. I suspect, however, that what actually did the job was the audibly hurried departure of the resident pelican. By then, of course, the question was moot. My eyes snapped open just a fraction too late to focus on whatever it was that flashed from the sky to impact the beach not ten feet away. Later, I was able to reconstruct the visual afterimage of what appeared to be a huge blazing fireball, whose flaming wake seemed to trail out to infinity. And, somehow, beyond. But at that precise moment, my only conscious impression was of being picked up, cartwheeled, and deposited in disarray upon the sand some fifty feet away. I kept my head down and covered with my arms until the hail of sundry, unidentifiable objects tapered off. Then, cautiously, I looked up to see how much of the island remained. I goggled. Shook my head, blinked sand from my eyes, and stared again. But the vision persisted. As a child, I always clapped my hands to a rosy blister when Peter Pan implored children everywhere to believe, to save Tinkerbell's life. And Walt Disney's conception of the tiny fairy's appearance substantially paralleled my own. Before my eyes, Tinkerbell stood knee-deep in the water, which was already seeping in to fill the shallow crater at whose center she stood. To Project Director Monitor's Log From Galittle Tenth Order Subject Project Extremis Preliminary readings suggest that the transuniversal shunt functioned properly once again, although study of data recorded during translation will be required to verify this conclusively. Further, no evidence of the shunt's brief existence remains detectable, 
either in this space or in any of the others into which it impinged. Our team is now on Earth, safely according to the necessarily limited data available to viewer-compatible instrumentation. Their passage through adjacent spaces was without any apparent side effects. By visual examination as well, their condition is grossly normal. With the collapse of the shunt, viewers once again function normally and depict the target area. This temporary interference represents a potentially serious problem. On this occasion, and despite elaborate precautions, our team emerged in close proximity to the subject. Fortunately for our purposes, he was not injured. A solution is needed, and most urgently. The subject's initial readings show emotional shock and mental disorientation commensurate to the stimuli. However, I do not expect this to interfere with the progress of the mission. Indeed, his condition probably will work to our advantage. Automatic recorders would trigger the moment viewer reception cleared and will operate continuously for the duration of the mission, enabling anyone to watch developments which may be missed due to scheduling conflicts. Likewise, all instruments capable of functioning through the viewer channel are discharging into the data field for further analysis. The mission profile calls for uninterrupted monitoring of our team's progress, as it has been anticipated that remote intervention may prove necessary. Incidentally, those responsible for its development, third through fifth order practitioners all, are to be commended for their work on the new Project Director Monitor's Log MindLink equipment. As specified in the Council's research directive, the mechanics of operation are very nearly instinctive, and unlike the earlier data entry system, which required both a high degree of manual dexterity and intense concentration upon the keyboard, not at all distracting. Memorialization of personal observations proceeds at the speed of thought and with no more effort. In my judgment, this system would seem to fulfill all design criteria.